Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Come on in. It is time for Coffee and Conversations with TK. Come on in, everyone. It is our normal custom to play some music, and I am very excited right now. I'm very excited. Coffee and Conversations with TK is starting, and I am playing for your listening pleasure this morning, uh, Todd Delaney's Victory Belongs to Jesus. As we come in, come on in, everyone, come on in. Share like love, share like love. Come on in. The song that you are playing, listening to right now is Todd Delaney's Victory Belongs to Jesus. Come on in. Good morning, Brittany Arnold. How are you, Pastor Stevenson? God bless you. What's up, Phaedra? Yukita Hall, one of our uh, demonstrators today. She will be uh, honored this morning. Good morning to you. Yes, the glasses, the glasses. It's, it's all about fashion, fashion. Good morning, everyone. Coffee and conversations. I'm excited. Hey, Vincent. How are you? The Rock Church of Shreveport. Come on in. Hey, cousin. Pastor Cousin. Yes. Howard. How are you? Good morning. Everyone that's coming in, the song is simply entitled, Victory Belongs to Jesus. This is our normal custom. You're listening to Todd Delaney and Victory Belongs to Jesus on Coffee and Conversations with TK. Go ahead, like, love, share. And you all also understand that I am a manuscript uh, person. And today I will also be sharing some notes with you. Good morning. The topic this morning is entitled Clean It Up. Go ahead, like and love Oliver. Demario, God bless you all. Hello, Miss Shane. Coffee and Conversations is starting. I am so excited. All of you entrepreneurs, all of my new friends, all of my sisters, my brothers, victory today belongs to Jesus. And in our topic, you're going to understand why this song is so important. So like, love, share. Like, love, share. Share it with someone. Tell them to come on in and join us. It is now 945, and we are so excited uh, to bring to you today Coffee and Conversations with TK. And I'm going to pause the song here, and I'm just going to uh, encourage you to go and listen to that. I did post it on my page, Todd Delaney's Victory Belongs to Jesus, because I want you to certainly understand that victory certainly does belong to the Lord. And through him, we are more than conquerors, because greater is he that lives in us than he that is in the world. So I'm excited today. The topic that we're going to be sharing today is entitled, Clean It up. So good morning. Good morning to all of the small business owners and entrepreneurs. This certainly is an amazing day. I'm very excited to share this Saturday morning with you and I am excited to join you. And before we get started, I just wanted to share with you that uh, again, you are victorious and we must walk in victory. We must live in victory. Um, I want to make sure that you all have your coffee. I have my coffee this morning and this is actually an amazing cup of coffee this morning because it is strong. I like to taste my coffee. So it's a strong cup of coffee and I I love it. So grab your coffee, grab a friend, knowing that we're all victorious. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And when you're more than a con conqueror, that places you in the category of champion. So let's champion our victories and let us move towards destiny in the way that the Lord has designed us to do so. Today, before we move on, I just want to honor and appreciate Three business owners. I am an advocate for business owners. It is just my heart. Your business is my passion. So I just love uh, expressing my excitement for other business owners. And today I want to take time just to express to you that Tutus by Cheryl. I love Tutus by Cheryl. I just want to give her a quick shout out. She is located in Fayetteville, Georgia. Cheryl McCord is her name. If you want to look her up on Facebook, I just want to send her a quick shout out. Thank you so much for always, always making me look fast. Fabulous tutus by Cheryl. I also want to appreciate Claudette White, Sister Claudette White. I am wearing uh, one of her pieces right now. 
Um, it's a beautiful casual Chanel necklace. It's a two-in-one. I love it. She has so many different accessories, and I want you to visit her. Uh, just inbox her. Go friend her. Claudette Smith White. Go do that right now and make sure you support her business. And also, Yukita Hall of Unique Designs. I want to show you a piece that she made. This is a Independence Day flower. You all know we like big, gaudy, flashy. I love this. This is all material. She did this by hand. It is a pin on the back, so it's very easily worn. And I just want to show this off for her. This is her fabulous creation by hand. Also, she has this corsage that she's made. And I just want to celebrate the business owners who are doing this. Come on and give her some likes and some loves. This is an amazing piece of artwork, and I just absolutely wanted to celebrate that today. I also want to give a shout out to my paparazzi team. They are doing it big. And I just want, these are some women who stepped out on faith, just took a leap of faith, just knowing that they may not have a business in mind, but it's something that to, can get them started. And they have started, and I'm telling you, they are doing a fantastic job. So I just want to thank each of you and share that with you. And let's support business owners all over um, this city as well as the country. Let's support them. Uh, and we are just going to move in the flow of entrepreneurship. So I'm excited today. Uh, in our normal custom, we do enjoy building a community. So if you have a business, go ahead and you can comment what your business is uh, below so that we can certainly find answers. We do know that answers equal profit. I want you to write that down. Answers equal profits solutions equal financial increase when you become the answer to someone's question it certainly does increase your financial profitability so solutions equal financial increase so i encourage each one of you to step out seize the moments of opportunities that are available and seize them i am headed to charlotte north carolina and i have been so blessed to uh have an opportunity for my book diamonds for your day to be showcased and i will be doing a book signing in charlotte north carolina on tuesday independence day um from 2 to 3 p.m i want you to come and visit me it's an awesome devotional you can also get it from amazon or you can see me in charlotte north carolina it's time for the topic coffee and conversations this morning presents clean it up i want you to be encouraged and i want you to be empowered and today, Clean It Up is going to speak to a generation of plastic card carriers. I want to admonish you today to truly release yourself from the bonds of debt. Come on, type that with me. I am releasing myself from the bond of debt. Credit in so many cases sometimes can be equated to be wealth, but I want you to know that that is a myth. Having credit cards and credit card debt does not equal wealth you become a slave to that debt and i want you to understand that i want to speak to you today regarding your credit because it also speaks to your financial responsibility and financial management credit is all we have sometimes and that is the only thing that can speak to our name so it must be good. Let me preface this uh, entire conversation with the fact and the disclaimer that I am not a financial advisor, neither am I a credit counselor. However, I am just someone uh, speaking from experience and from my rung of the ladder of perspective. I just want to encourage and empower you to release yourself from debt. In fact, there may be someone who has joined us who is a financial advisor. I encourage you to put information out there respectfully just letting us know um, how we can uh, manage our debt better so I do welcome your feedback on this topic I want to be very transparent right now and tell you that I have had astronomical debt and I understand the weight and the frustration that it carries when you cannot successfully manage it that is why the topic says to clean it up. I am speaking from my heart this morning and from personal experience. And in this very transparent moment, I admit to you that I have not always been a good steward over my finances. I have had money 
I was uh, I was given money at an early age. I, I loved having money. I was taught how to make money legally. Um, I watched my parents uh, go to work every day. I watched them pay their bills on time. Uh, but I was not really uh, aware of how to successfully manage money. So when I moved away to college, it was very easy for me to obtain credit cards. And when they walked around with that nice t-shirt saying, if you sign up for this credit card you can get this t-shirt I saw the t-shirt and this thousand dollar limit on a credit card into an 18 year old to a 20 year old to a 22 year old that is music to your ears when someone tells you that I can give you a thousand dollars for a t-shirt in fact I really did not understand that this thousand dollars was simply a loan it was carrying me into debt and what I began to uh, understand about this credit card business is that it only took one swipe to change the course of my financial portfolio did I say something yes I did it took one swipe of that credit card to change the status of my financial portfolio so I became very fearful after a while because my debt began to mount and mount and I did not know how to get myself out of what took me only probably 15 minutes to get in I had debt that I did not know how to maintain so as I was enjoying materialistic items as I was enjoying uh, what I felt was a comfortable life what I did not know was that I was living with a loan and spiraling myself down into debt. Understand young people, understand mature people, understand that debt is something that you must pay. It is not something that's given to you without payment. It comes with a consequence. So come on. It does have an adverse effect and it will get out of control if you do not control it. So as I matriculated through the workforce, I began to get around successful people. I love working around successful people. Uh, let me put a note here. If you are the smartest person in your group, get out of that group. You need to be around people who can polish and iron and hone your skills. So I was around, I worked around attorneys. I worked around real estate agents. I began to work around financial advisors. I took a financial peace class by Dave Ramsey. The class was called Financial Peace. And this class changed my life. I want to show you this book. It's Dave Ramsey Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Yes, it was uh, back in 2000. Four, when I began to take this course uh, and I also went through it again in 2006 but I want you to know it started to help me to clean it up come on type it clean it up clean it up I believe that God is a debt cancellator I do believe that with all of my heart I believe that God has given us favor with man and that he can reverse debt I believe that if there's anybody out there that believes that you can say that you believe it I believe that God is a debt counselor but I want you to uh, he's a, he's the best debt counselor that you can have he's the be best debt consolidator that we have but what I want you to do is I want you to help yourself while God is helping us I want us to not create debt Debt is not a way to build wealth. That is a common misconception. Debt is not a way to build wealth. Cleaning up debt and, and credit card loans, it's not an overnight process. I want you to understand, as I began to clean up my debt, it took me some time. I mean, it took me some time. What it took me 10 minutes to enjoy, it took me almost 10 years to clean up. And I'm still working on some things, but I promise you, I thank God that I am enjoying the financial freedom that I am enjoying now because I took time to listen and I took time to clean it up. Uh, I did sacrifice some things. I had to sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. I had to sacrifice in order to experience free flowing financial freedom. It caused me discomfort. 
It will cause you discomfort. And even while I'm talking, someone is actually debating the fact that they really need to hold on to their credit cards and they just can't get out uh, of this debt and it's just too insurmountable. And, and you feel as though it's so weighted down that you may not be able to get out of it. I'm letting you know right now, God will make the provision if you provide the idea that you are willing to be a good steward over what he has given you. So what does that mean? That means we have to clean it up. Stop using credit cards for everything. Stop using credit cards for everything. Be wise, young people. I don't know why I keep saying young people. I have a love and a heart for young people. But let me tell you, young people, when you swipe a card for a four for four meal at Wendy's, know that that four dollars is now being charged 21 percent interest, sometimes as high as 28 percent interest depending on the card and the lender that has given you that credit. Be wise before you swipe a card. Know how to manage your debt. If you cannot manage credit well, it is not advised that you utilize credit cards frequently. Okay? Be wise. If you if you understand, if you all are, are claiming being debt-free, I see you all saying, I want to be debt-free, debt-free, clean it up. Romans 13, clean up the debt. Yes, yes, yes. Come on and say that. We're cleaning it up. We're cleaning it up. If you cannot manage credit well, it is not advised that you use credit cards frequently. When you use them, be sure to pay them off so that your credit can stay in good standing. I do have a few credit cards because they yield frequent flyer miles and other bonuses and things of that nature that I can actually use in return for using that credit service. However, I weekly pay that card off so that my credit is in good standing. So that if for any reason my credit has to be pulled for any reason, if there's something that I want, you can have all of the money in the world, but there are some things that calls for your credit record to be pulled. Your credit is all you have to show that you can manage debt well. And so if for any reason my credit has to be pulled, I want to show that I am financially responsible and that I make payments on time and that I make payments frequently and that I don't carry balances and that my credit cards are not higher than the amount of money that I'm making and the amount of money that I can actually pay towards that. So I just want to encourage you today to be responsible in credit management. Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Stand in the mirror and ask yourself, what would my life be right now if I did not have this extra debt? That's the first question. The second question, how can I change my life with the extra money that I am putting towards credit card payments? Understand this. You're taking money from your coffers out of your bank, out of your check, and you're sending it to the credit card industry. It's coming out of your bank. Keep it in your bank. If you have it, keep it. Why are you sending it to the credit card company? So I want you to ask yourself that question. How can my life change? How much would I be able to enjoy if I just do not ignore a debt collector? If I just pay off the debt or work with the debt collector to pay it off, how much more free would my life be? Many of us cannot even stand to hear the phone ring because we know it's a debt collector. We swipe them to the left. We ignore them because we, we are so locked into debt. We don't even know how to respond to them. So I'm going to give you a few pointers from Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. This is hopefully just to help you get back on track. And again, let me just put out there and disclaim that I am not a financial advisor. I am not trying to be one. I am not a credit counselor. I just want to help somebody today uh, as I am helping myself. This is for all of us. I am by no means exempt. In fact, this comes to the messenger first. So first, we have to be honest with ourselves and really deal with where we are financially. One reason why we stay in debt is because we are so busy masking our lives with the facade of status. Stop masking your life with the facade of status and be truthful with yourself and understand that you do not have to force yourself into debt by trying to keep up with a facade of status. 
Do well with what you have. Make what you have look good and stop being overwhelmed with the facade of status. And I guarantee you that first truth will help you already start. Uh, that's 80% of you coming out of debt right there. That's 80% wiping out unnecessary debt is stop living the life of a facade of status. So just stop doing that. Register with creditkarma.com. I want to encourage everyone of you to register with creditkarma.com. This will tell you where you are with your credit and it helps you to begin to make changes. Now they're also going to offer you some some other credit cards but you do not have to take the credit card offers just because you're signing up for those. Just understand those are merely advertisements to uh, you know to help pay for that particular site. So it's not saying you're, you're just so great and your credit is so wonderful so go apply for these credit cards that's just an advertisement so skip past that register and come on out of that <laughs> and make sure that you can clean up your debt now this will speak to your financial portfolio what we have to stop doing as a culture and as a community of people is stop making excuses for the fact that we were not taught how to manage money and we have to start a new trend and a new tradition in our generation of a life of cleaning up debt and, and being debt free all the way around. Secondly, while you are paying the card, cut up the card. Get you some scissors and cut up the card. Cut up the, what did I say? Put it on, just write it in the comments. Cut up the card. While the card is still good and you're still making payments on the card, cut up the card. This will certainly eliminate the idea that you have made a $25 payment so now you have a free $25 on that card no ma'am no sir cut up the card uh, I have even known people to put the cards in a bucket of water and put that bucket of water in the freezer and freeze that credit card that way while you're paying that card you are seriously eliminating debt because you cannot use the card. So whatever you have to do, I know right now somebody is saying, oh, no, she didn't already. She done lost me. I'm not cutting up my credit card. I need my card. Well, listen, you go ahead and stay in debt. And for everybody else who wants to enjoy financial freedom, cut up the card. Yes, it has a balance. Yes, you're paying on it. Yes, it's still a good card, but cut it up so that you will not be tempted to use it. I see you liking. I see you loving. I see you. I see you. I see you. Thirdly, what I want you to do, I want you to list your debts. Now, this is coming from Dave Ramsey. I, I want to make sure that he is properly quoted. This is coming from Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Thirdly, I want you to list your debts. From the smallest debt to the largest debt and begin paying off the smallest debts first. Okay, this will show you a sense of accomplishment and this is called the snowball effect. And after this call inside of the group coffee and conversations with TK, I will post how to work the snowball effect so that you can pay off your credit cards in an efficient manner. Listen, you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to be rich. You only have to have a mind and a heart to pay off your debt and to be debt free. And again, let me reiterate the fact that it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to stay focused and you're going to have to maintain a life of sacrifice in order to get out of debt. Now, somebody just say clean it up. This it, is hard. It's hard to hear it. I know it. I know it. We've been in debt so long. We've become accustomed to it. It's almost become a normal lifestyle for us. But I'm telling you, I want us all to enjoy financial freedom. So let's just clean it up. According to Proverbs 22 and 7 from the New International Version, uh, the Bible says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. The borrower is a slave to the lender. Deuteronomy 28 promises us that if we obey the Lord, that we will eat the good of the land and that we, we will be the lender and not the borrower. In our case of debt right now, we are a slave to the lender. Who is the lender? Macy's, Dillard's, 
Capital One, American Express, Finger Hut, Midnight Velvet. These are the lenders. We are slaves to JCPenney, Sears. We are slaves to them if we are carrying insurmountable debt and not paying that debt and not being a good steward of that debt. We are slaves to the lenders and these lenders come with interest rates, high interest rates. So let's get this in our mind. Somebody say cash and carry, cash and carry, cash and carry. That simply means if you do not have the cash, you do not carry. Plain and simple. This is very difficult. It's difficult for me to even say it. If you do not have the cash, you do not carry. Plain and simple. Stop using your credit cards for everything. Stop using your credit cards for everything. Cash and carry. This will eliminate debt because if you want it, you have to have the cash to get it. Okay? This is a surefire way to stop using your credit cards. One thing I want to say, I want to pause and say right here. As we're cashing and as we're carrying, pay people back that you owe. Make it your business to relieve yourself of stress and adverse health reactions that are linked to owing people because do believe that your health suffers when you are in debt. Because you're up at night trying to figure out how you're going to pay these bills. You're not you, you may be asleep, but you're not resting because every time the phone rings, you're jumping because you you don't know if it's a a, a card um, collector, a bill collector, whoever you owe, pay them. Pay people back when you borrow their money. A lot of stress can be eliminated when you just pay people back that you owe. Even if you do not have the entire amount, in good faith, communicate with them and let them know that you are at least trying to pay them back. I promise you, if you owe someone $100 and you give them $5 and you communicate with them, listen, I'm doing the best that I can to make this payment. They are not going to give you that $5 back. They're going to take that $5. They're going to thank you. And in good faith, they're going to say, I appreciate the fact that even though she or he did not have the full payment, that they are paying on it. And in some cases, when you communicate and when you do well by people and you actually try and you show forth good faith, they will eliminate the debt for you. When you communicate, ignoring people and avoiding people and bill collectors causes you to spiral even deeper into debt because you are not communicating and you're not paying. 90% of the time, if you answer the phone and speak with the bill collector, let them know where you are financially. This goes back to our first point of truth. If you let them know where you are, for the most part, they're willing to work with you. They are willing to help you obtain what you need to obtain in order for you to get out of that debt. Trust me. I know I do not ignore debt collectors. If I see an 877 number, an 800 number, I answer the call because I want them to understand that in good faith, I understand that I owe you. And I'm going to tell you right now that I could have mistakenly missed the payment or if you can work with me on this payment, I'm willing to work with you. Just communicate that. My entire life changed. My entire financial portfolio changed when I began to communicate the fact that this is where I am and this is how I can help myself if you are willing to help me. And guess what? I promise you, they helped me and, and, and I am living out of debt right now because I communicated with them. I was in college. I messed up. I made a lot of mistakes. We all do. Uh, being saved and being full of the Holy Ghost does not exempt you from making mistakes. I am admitting to you, I made so many financial mistakes. Even, that's right, even calling your student loan uh, debt collectors. The student, they will, when I tell you, listen, they will work with you Talk to those student loan people before your loan goes into default. 
before. After it goes into default, there's really nothing much you can do about it except pay it. And if you're trying to get in school, you cannot get in school with default on your student loan record. It is a credit report showing all of the loans that you've taken out from every school that you've gone to. And once it's in default, in order to get into school, you have to go on a six-month payment plan, a repayment plan, and you cannot miss a month or the payment plan starts over. It is null and void regardless of what you've paid into it. And so that's the only way you can get back into school after your loans have gone into default. Talk to Nailnet. Talk to Sally Mae. Talk to your student loan debt collectors. Let them know where you are so that they can help you communicate. That's all I want you to do. You will be surprised how communication will boost people's perception of your integrity. Have integrity in your finances. Have integrity even in your debt. We're all sitting right here. Most of my, my peer group, most of my circles, most of the people that I know have some sort of debt, whether it's credit card debt, whether it's student loan debt, whether it's a car note. We are all facing some type of debt. But what I want you to understand that it will boost the perception of your integrity uh, to your lender if you are just honest and upfront and stop living the facade of status. We we want to we're, we're today is the last day for that. We're not doing that anymore. It will just free your life. Lastly, I want to encourage you to put a smile on your face and be excited about getting out of debt. Is there anybody excited today about going into financial freedom? Again, I am not an, a financial advisor, but I advise you to find a financial advisor in your area and let them help you save for an emergency fund. You need at least $1,000 in an emergency fund, $500 if you make $20,000 a year or less. You need at least $1,000 in an emergency fund that you do not touch. A savings account is not to use like a checking account. In fact, any banker will tell you that if you use your savings account regularly enough, they will change it to a checking account because transferring and taking money out of a savings account tells the banker that you're not saving anything. It tells the institution they're not saving. They are using this money. So instead of you having a savings account, they will revert your savings account into a checking account if you do not be a good, if you're not a good steward over the savings account. OK, so let's be excited about walking into financial freedom. I don't know about you, but I want us to get out of debt. I want us to live free. Those of us who are business owners, you cannot even successfully run your business and you're in debt. You want to be out of debt completely. Let us not be slaves to finances. I am not a slave to finance. I do not want to be a slave to finance. Release the burden of debt. And let's be financially sound. Remember, it is not going to happen overnight. Trust me. Believe me. I shared very transparent moments with you. It's not going to happen overnight. But if you can commit to becoming accountable, you will begin to see great results. This will allow your business to flourish, your life to flourish, and you're happy to be exponential. I believe in God with you. I'm, I'm wrapping this up and I'm believing God with you today that we're going to join in together, take steps together to become financially free. I am looking for the manifestation of God in our finances. And I want to hear testimonies of how uh, we took steps to creating uh, debt uh, freedom, freedom from debt, how we took steps uh, to becoming free from debt. I want to hear the testimonies of that. I want you to write down your bills from smallest to largest and begin to pay those bills off. I want you to, I want to see you on Facebook saying, listen, I paid off a credit card. It's cut up. I no longer am a slave to this debt. I pray that we find favor with God and man. And I pray that God increases us in his wisdom in finances and that favor in our finances shall be our portion. Today, I am so happy that you joined me. Thank you so much for this time. You have been tuned in to Coffee and Conversations with TK. God bless you. May his face uh, shine upon you and may we live free from debt and enjoy financial freedom. Be blessed.